What a weekend of championship action we have just had. Let's talk about it. So as you guys know, we are now heading into an international break, but the championship left us on a quite dramatic note, actually. So in today's video, we're going to be going over every game that took place over the weekend. As always, I want to get your thoughts on what you made of your team's performance in the comments down below. Before we do hop into it, a big shout out to our sponsors over at OneFootball. As always, if you want to keep updated with everything going on around the footballing world, then OneFootball is the place to go ahead and do that. If you want to get live updates to your phone whenever a goal does go in, you want to get the latest information and transfer gossip going on around your club, then OneFootball is the the place to go ahead and do that. Obviously the transfer window is now heading towards its climax. We've still got the domestic window open for quite some time but we'll be going over that in a little bit more detail in tomorrow's video. And before we do hop into anything I will include your guys score predictions on screen now so fair play to everyone who did manage to get a score prediction correct this weekend. I had my best weekend so far actually. I had a really good one for predictions. I think I managed to get four of mine correct this weekend so I'm making up for having a bit of a slow start to the season with the predictions. Also if we do take a look at the prediction league this is how it is currently lining up. I've actually managed to get myself in there this week. I'm up in 8th after having a bit of a blinder in terms of my score predictions. But we do have a new leader at the top. Omar has gone top after a big weekend for himself. Top with 41 points now going into the international break. But without any further ado, let's hop into going over these games. And so starting out with Friday night's game, that's all Bournemouth take all three points from Coventry as they walked away with a 3-1 away victory. Really impressive performance from Bournemouth given some of the attacking players that they were missing from this lineup as well for injury. It was a really solid and complete one. Jefferson Lerma took the lead for them after just seven minutes. It was a great spinning pass by Gosling on the edge of the box into Dom Solanke. He then laid off Lerma and in a pinpoint finish into the far post made it 1-0. Solanke had a good chance to make it too soon after he took the ball around the keeper, but Coventry did well to clear that one off the line. Maddie Godden eventually got Cardiff back into it just before half-time. Well-taken penalty, Lewis Cook gave it away. To be honest, for Lewis Cook, that was probably only the bad thing he did all game because I thought he was absolutely excellent at anchoring that Bournemouth midfield. Actually, Cook, Gosling and Lerma all seem to work quite well in tandem together. In the second half though it was Gosling who stole the show. He bagged Bournemouth second in the 51st minute and then his second goal was an absolute belter from long range. Picked out the bottom corner really well. And like I say considering some of the players that Bournemouth were missing that they've got to come back into the squad. Really impressed with this one from them. I think they've shown their quality now. The other talking point to go over was the red card for Gustavo Hamer. We spoke about him in the preview to this one with his creative output. This is another side of his game which is going to have to work in a little bit. He raised his hands to him and there was a bit of a slap. There was also a bit of a suggestion of a spit as well. I've watched the video back. That's inconclusive. However, the player is adamant that that wasn't the case, so I'll take his word on that. But he's certainly going to be a miss for Coventry for what I I expect to be their next three matches. After that, we then had Derby beating Norwich by one goal to nil. And listen, this one was a bit of a smash and grab performance, but Derby will take that every day of the week. I like what Curtis Davis came out and said after the match. He said that, you know, we didn't want to go toe to toe with Norwich because if you do that, they can absolutely play you off the pitch. This is something that Norwich are going to have to get used to in the Championship this season. I think that one thing that was evident to me was how late Jordan Hugel came on, you know. For this type of game and how Derby were playing, a play like Hugel would have been much more effective coming on sooner. When he did come on, he, he actually was a bit of a presence up front. Although there are arguments to be made that Norwich could have easily gone on to win this one. Obviously the team of Pookie penalty, it was given for a handball quite clearly. I think we've seen some dodgy handball penalties given in the Premier League but this one was definitely a penalty. Pookie steps up to take it and slips and it ends up going over the bar now. I remember in Norwich's promotion season they were absolutely awful at taking penalties weren't they? They missed a catalogue of them. That's continuing into this season it seems. Max Irons also had a great chance but David Marshall was on top form for this one. Makes an Unbelievable reflex save. Hugel has a chance near the end. He saves that as well. But the real moment of quality came from Wayne Rooney. He did the same in a game against Preston last season. It was a silly place to give away the free kick for Norwich. What I will say though was it was a terrific run from Knight to win the free kick. Charging from inside his own half towards the Norwich penalty area. And then Wayne Rooney steps up and it's absolute perfection, isn't it? Derby now have their first points on the board. But for Norwich, frustrating game once again. After that, we then have Blackburn drawing 0-0 with Cardiff City. Now, if there was one game this weekend that I would bank on not being a goalless draw. It was probably one involving Blackburn, but Cardiff did well defensively in this one, albeit they weren't helped by that red card to Lee Tomlin in the second half, but we'll get to that. First off, both sides had relatively decent chances. Junior Hoylett had one tip around the post by Kaminsky. Great save from him. Adam Armstrong also had a chance for Blackburn. He managed to race through on goal, but Alex Smithies came out well 
to deny him on that occasion. Into the second half, the game-changing moment came in the 69th minute when Lee Tomlin was shown a second yellow card. What on earth was he doing? Sam Gallagher does some really good defensive work here, bringing the ball out of his own box. And then Lee Tomlin, who's already on a yellow card that he picked up just 10 minutes prior to this, goes in with like a shoulder charge just to try and stop him. Absolutely needless from Tomlin, and it leaves his team in a bit of a sticky situation going into the final moments of this match. From then on, it is Blackburn who dominate the play. They open up a few openings, to be fair to them. Sam Gallagher gets a great opportunity, but he can't manage to fire that one on target. That goes over the bar, and it was probably Blackburn's best chance to go ahead and win the game. They had a couple of other speculative efforts that just about went wide. Like I say, it really was that Gallagher chance that was going to go on to win this one. Listen, Cardiff, I'm sure, will take the point, you know, down to 10 men for the last 20 minutes away at a free screw in Blackburn's side. After that, we then head to Luton, who picked themselves up after last weekend, beating Wickham by two goals to nil. Now, the early signs haven't looked all too promising for Wickham. They're the only team now in the championship yet to score and they are the first team to concede 10 goals. This one, they actually started out fairly well to be fair to them. They were pressing Luton quite well. Daryl Hogan popped up with a couple of opportunities. Little spark from that left hand side looking to make something happen but heading into the second half, this was when Luton really took control of this game. It was a wonderful finish from Mpanzu from outside the box. Picks out that far post brilliantly. I was a big fan of him last season. I think he adds a lot to that Luton midfield. They had several other chances to go ahead and wrap this up. However, Wickham did have the golden chance to get back into this one and actually had the ball in the back of the net. However, it was ruled out for offside. Looking back on the replay from the angle I saw it at, it's really hard to judge whether it was or wasn't. It was a very tight call. But then obviously that goal's overturned. Luton then go up the pitch and almost immediately make it 2-0 with Lee bagging his second goal of the season. Quite poor defending from Wickham for that one, I must say. But Luton have started out really well, you know. Nine points from their first four matches really isn't to be looked down upon. Wickham, on the other hand, definitely got work to do over this international break. I do fear for them. After that, we then have Middlesbrough beating Barnsley by two goals to one. Now, Middlesbrough had a great chance to take the lead early on in this one. Tuba Rackpom lapsed onto a defensive mistake by Barnsley, but he couldn't get that effort on target. Johnny Housen did give them the lead before half-time, though. Tavernier with a thumping free kick, which smashed against the crossbar. Housen did well to follow that in to make it 1-0 to Borough. What I would say about this Middlesbrough side is, very good team off the ball. You can see the impact that Neil Warnock's had there in the spell he's had in charge so far. It was also nice to see Neil Warnock back in the stadium for this one, obviously after recovering from coronavirus. Tuber Akbom early on into the second half though is able to make up for that miss in the first half. It was once again Tavernier with a long ranging effort. The goalkeeper could only parry it into the path of Akbom who had a tap in to make it 2-0 for Borough. In terms of Barnsley, things just haven't quite clicked for them so far this season. I still think they're in need of a little bit more on this transfer market so I'll wait to see if any other deals unfold over the next few days and we're also waiting to see what happens with the future of Struber as well with his future very much up in the air at the moment. Collie Woodrow did get Barnsley back into it, making it 2-1 in the 89th minute from the penalty spot, but that was never going to be enough to get them back into the game. And Middlesbrough claimed their first three points of the season. It's been a under, they've gone under the radar a little bit, Middlesbrough, haven't they? I think they've started out fairly well. By no means the finished article, but you compare this Borough side to Middlesbrough at the start of last season, miles above that level. And then we have Bristol City continuing their perfect starts to the season as they saw a Forest by two goals to one. Now, on the whole for Forest, this was a much improved performance than what we've been seeing from them lately in the championship. What let them down was just how slow they started this game. Borussia City were all over them for the first 30 or so minutes. Vyman took the lead after 12 minutes. I'm going to bang the Chris Martin drum once again, but he was so good in this one. Winning absolutely everything. He had a hand in setting up both the goals as well. Great finish from Vyman to give them the lead and then Naki Wells once again in the goals. Him and Martin seem to have this link up between themselves. It's such a good partnership. Although taking it back before those chances, Forrest had a great chance to take the lead, but Daniel Bentley makes an absolutely outrageous save. I think it goes to show what Forrest were up against at the moment, that Daniel Bentley was probably man of the match for this one. He was absolutely outrageous. The save he made in the first half is a contender for the save of the season. It was unbelievable reflex save. Luke Freeman does get Forrest back into the game before half time though with an absolute worldly long ranging strike. There was no chance Bentley was getting near there even with how well he was playing. Heading into the second half then, Forrest keep the pressure on moving forward. That goal just couldn't quite drop for them. Bentley once again came up with a couple of big saves for Bristol City. The international break's probably not coming at a particularly great time for either side. Bristol City want to carry on this momentum that they're playing with at the moment and Forest need to get themselves out of this rut. They're in the bottom three. I know we're only after three matches but the pressure is continuing to mount on Sabre Lamucci. Forest fans I'd love to get your perspectives down below. What do you think is going to happen over the international break? Do you think he's still going to be here? I wasn't sure about Bristol City at the start of the season but the winning me round. They really have been excellent in transition so far. And another team that's continuing to win me round and there's also 
also got off to a perfect start this season is Reading. They beat Watford by one goal to nil. George Pluskas with the only goal of the game in this one. It was the first goal that Watford have conceded into this one. And it was just a bit of a lackluster performance from the away side, really. Creativity, intensity, they didn't have all too much going forward. They saw quite a bit of the ball in this one, but couldn't really open up too many pockets of space. Reading were quite comfortable for this one. Now, my prediction coming into this game, I thought that injuries may start to catch up with Reading, but it was a really solid performance from them, you know, building out from the back. Brilliant finish from Puskas, you have to say. The ball in from Holmes. Puskas then sort of takes the ball, turns on the spot, gets his shot away brilliantly. This one always had the feeling that it was going to be a bit of a low scoring one, so that first goal was going to be important. James Garner did have a good chance to give Watford the lead. He crashed a free kick against the crossbar. Absolutely thumping effort from him. But other than that and a couple of other flashes, Watford didn't really offer too much in this one. Giao still recovering from his injury. He was on the bench with this one. It was Puskas leading the line. It was good to see him off the mark. There's a lot to like about this Redden squad at the moment, and like I say, they'll be heading into this international break full of confidence. Then we had Rotherham drawing one all with Huddersfield. In Rotherham matches so far this season that always seems to be late drama doesn't there it was the home side who took the lead though brilliant strike from Wiles outside the box about 25 yards out picked at the bottom corner brilliantly and Ben Hamer can't get there brilliant finish from him to make it 1-0 to Rotherham you can see by the match stats for this one though it was Huddersfield who dominated play when Rotherham get an early goal against you you know they're going to be resolute and dogged to keep it at 1-0 you know and they had a couple of chances after that on counter-attacks and things like that Lapido had a good chance which was saved well by Ben Hamer but Huddersfield had a lot of the ball, they just couldn't really open up too many clear goal scoring opportunities. It was a really good defensive performance from this Rotherham side. And it was for only a 96 minute own goal that got Huddersfield back into the game. It was a pip across that was diverted towards goal by McDonnell. Blackman couldn't react to it. And Huddersfield in the end managed to snatch a point from it. You could say in the end that they that was what they deserved. You know, they dominated play in the second half. But Rotherham would have been disappointed to throw it away so late on after defending so well throughout the 90. Into our next game, more like drama in this one. Another 96 minute equaliser as Wednesday drew one all with QPR. Now, after QPR I thought had started this game out fairly well, they were getting into a couple of decent positions and they put Wednesday into a few uncomfortable areas. Wednesday actually really grew into this one and I thought there were quite a few standout performances. We mentioned Alan Rich a few videos ago for not really being the same player over these last few months, but for this one, playing as that wing back once again, probably his best natural position, looked like a real threat. He pretty much set up the opening goal with his fizz ball going across the box bar but could only put it into the back of his own net. Him and Harris on either side I thought were looking quite threatening throughout the match especially going into that second half. Luongo once again really impressive combative midfielder. He had a great chance which he smashed against the crossbar. There was a lot to like about this Wednesday performance and I'm a lot more confident about their chances at this point in time than I was at the start of the season. There seems to be a lot more togetherness about them at the moment. But it was Macaulay Bond on his debut who did get QPR back into this game. It was a brilliant ball swung in by Bar and then Macaulay Bond cushioned header takes it really well to make it 1-1 in the dying moments of this game. I think he'll be going to be a really good addition for QPR. And then we had Swansea beating Millwall by two goals to one. Now the first off ended nil-nil. It was probably Swansea who had the better of that half in terms of possession. They didn't really muster up too many clear-cut opportunities but the intent was there from them to try and get forward. And it was straight into that second off where they did nice to take the lead. Brilliant ball whipped in by Morgan Gibbs White. Defending and maybe a little bit suspect in this one that Bidwell's able to get to that ball first but he's been absolutely absolutely superb this season for Swansea. He plays so high up as that left wing back. He gets in at the far post and manages to make it 1-0 to Swansea. Millwall equalise soon after though. They absolutely cut Swansea apart moving forward. It's through the middle of the pitch this one. Couple of nice interchanging passes and then Tom Bradshaw with a thumping effort makes it 1-0. Perhaps Freddie Wilburn could have got down to that one but great finish nonetheless. And then looking into the goal that goes on to win this game probably quite uncharacteristically poor defending from Millwall you have to say. It's a bit of a goal mouth scramble. It's a bit hectic in and around the six yard box for this one. Eventually it's Cabango who's able to turn it in to make it two for Swansea. And Millwall pressed towards the end of the game. They just couldn't quite get anything over the line. So listen, good three points for Swansea who've started the season out well. I think that if they're able to keep this whole squad together and add a little bit more, they'll be looking like a real strong case for the top six. And then we get into Sunday's game where we have Brentford two, Preston North End four. Now I'm recording this straight after we've played so it's still a little bit raw for me but that was some second half performance from Preston North End to say 
the least. We started out the game not even too badly. We were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brentford in terms of pressuring them, but they just came up with two real moments of quality. Defending from wide areas has been a bit of a problem for us, and when they have a player who's going to be as clinical as Ivan Tony was in this game, we were always going to rue those mistakes at the back. The second one especially was a great finish from him, but 2-0 down at half-time didn't give us much of a chance to get back into it. We all know how resolute they were defensively last season, especially at home. But something just clicked with us. Scott Sinclair deserves a massive shout-out for this one. He was absolutely ruthless in this second half. Scott Sinclair very much is not the dynamic winger that I think a lot of North End fans thought we were getting. He's a player who comes up in moments. I'd say probably the best finisher at the club, and he has that know-how in the final third to make all the difference. And he, boy, did he do that in this second half here today. The first goal, great ball swung in by Rafferty, headed down by Bauer, into the path of Sinclair, and a nice finish. He then gets us level after a brilliant ball was whipped in by Andy Hughes. There was so much energy about this second half performance. Ryan Ledson stole the show once again in the second half. Brad Potts was brilliant. Maguire buzzing in the round. Alan Brown was non-stop. Brad Potts is a player who's continuing to grow on me as the months go on. Fantastic in the second half once again. He took his goal really well. Caught the Brentford goalkeeper out at the near post. And then Maguire, deservedly so, got off the mark for the season as well. Adding the fourth for North End. It was an absolutely ruthless second half. And to be honest, I think it's no more than what we've deserved so far this season. Getting our first win on the board here, you know. Looking at the fixtures we've had on the opening day against Swansea, a tough fixture where there wasn't much in the game. Up against Norwich, I'd argue that we were the better side in that one. Against Stoke, we got really unlucky with the red card. So we were due a win before the international break. Boy, did we take it in emphatic style. In terms of Brentford, I was astounded at how they fell off in the second half. I don't know if that's a mentality thing. You know, as soon as Preston got one back, they looked nervous. But what an emphatic win that is for North End. I'm, I, as you can tell, I'm still absolutely buzzing by it. And then to round things off, we had Stoke drawing one all with Birmingham. Not quite the other six goal thriller we had on Sunday, Brentford against Preston, but nevertheless, a bit of late drama that we had in this one. Stoke were threatening, not so much from open play, but set pieces. Stephen Fletcher had an audacious free kick, which slammed off the post, which nearly went in. From open play, they just looked a little bit too limited. I'm wondering if they're going to look to switch away from this five at the back system when they do play at home. I think they can afford to be a little bit more expressive. Obviously, away matches, I think that system works quite well, but when they're at home, it's on them to very much bring the game to the opposition. At times, they just looked a little bit short for creativity, but for Birmingham, it looked up until the 86th minute like the perfect away performance. It looked like they'd gone ahead and won this one. It was a great corner taken by Maxime Collin. It met Harley Dean. He got a cushion header on it to make it 1-0 to Birmingham. Like I said, they then led up until the 86th minute, and it was disappointing in the way that they did concede. It was Nick Powell whose goal it will go down in the end, but it took a couple of deflections, I think, on the way, and just about managed to squirm in past Etheridge. Well, both sides will take the point there in what has been a fairly solid start to the season for both of them. But guys, there we have it. There was all the action that went on this weekend in the championship. So as always, do get your thoughts in the comments down below. We also have the international transfer deadline tonight. So if any clubs want to get any business done, then that has to be concluded today. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out on that and then we'll be rounding it up in tomorrow's video. In terms of my goal of the weekend, I'm going to give it to Wayne Rooney, I think, for that winning free kick against Norwich. Great bit of quality from that match. And then result of the weekend, I've got to be giving it to North End for that fantastic 4-2 comeback away at Brentford. So do get your thoughts in the comments down below. But apart from that, thanks for watching. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like and please do stick around for a bit of regular championship content. But apart from that, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next one.